Are you interested in antique and traditional tools? Do you want to collect them? Do you want to use them? Or just appreciate them for their heritage and what they can do? Then MWTCA is for you. In this video, we will chronicle the building of a period workbench by members of MWTCA for the Thomas Day House and Union Tavern located in Milton, North Carolina. Thomas Day was a free man of color living in Milton, North Carolina from the mid-1820s. He was considered a master craftsman, innovator, was very well respected, and was a full member of the Milton Presbyterian Church. He was famous for his furniture designs and craftsmanship, as well as his architectural millwork, which is still treasured today. By the mid-1850s, he owned the largest cabinet-making shop in North Carolina. In the late 1850s, a severe financial downturn impacted his business, resulting in the sale of his assets. As far as we know, none of his tools or equipment survived today. He died around 1860. His business was located in what became known as the Thomas Day House and Union Tavern in Milton. After his death, the building changed hands a number of times and was damaged by fire in 1989. Preservation North Carolina purchased a house and a local group of citizens, the Thomas Day House and Union Tavern Restoration Incorporated, came together to begin the restoration process. In 2010, a representative of the group contacted some local members of MWTCA with a request to help them find some tools and perhaps a workbench for the house that would be appropriate to today's working period. Out of this request, and because of MWTCA's focus is on helping museums and not-for-profits, a project was launched by members that would result in a museum-quality, authentic reproduction workbench. So where do you begin? You need a plan, a design, material to construct it from, at least a couple of skilled craftsmen, and others who are willing and able to help. The design came primarily from Brian Coe of Old Salem, since Old Salem had some links today. It was a composite design based on traditional benches of that era, as those that would have been in Day's shop would likely have varied in size and design based on intended use. So here is how it all happened. Here, Brian, Bill, and Ed discuss where to start, and Roy is looking over some of the rough sawn poplar that will be used for legs and spreaders. Now we can begin work using all vintage hand woodworking tools. Here we are cutting a uh, spreader to length and beginning the planing process using both a wood bodied plane as well as a iron body plane. Here Dick is cutting a dado in the top of the bench jack which is used to help hold up long wood while working on it. Brian is using a story stick to transfer repetitive measurements to one of the four legs. Mortising out the top of one of the legs for a stretcher. Using an auger and twist bit to drill out some stock in a mortise before a chisel will be used to remove the rest. Roy using his Barnes number no. 3 Velocipede foot powered lathe to turn a maple blank that will become the wood screw for the leg vise. Once the blank is finished, Roy needs to thread the blank with the screw box. Here Bill is drilling the hole in the vise front, which is upside down, that the screw will fit through. The front leg of the bench will have the threads that the screw for the vise will fit into. Here Roy and Larry are preparing a tap to cut these threads. Note the half of the bench top sitting on a workbench behind Roy. More mortising and cleaning mortises out as the workbench is being assembled. Some more cutting and then the assembly of the base before the top is installed. Clamps are being used to keep it all together. To join or make the two pieces fit together, both four inch thick and rough sawn oak, we used an old method called kerfing. 
The clamps held the pieces together and a rip saw cut only the places that they touched. Here is a shot from below and Roy inspecting progress. About six passes were needed. To keep the top pieces even, the bottoms were cut out with an adze where they touched the frame. And yes, the top does fit on the frame. Part of the crew and Roy relaxing a little. A better look of the bench, still in Roy's woodworking school in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. With the bench moved to the Thomas Day House in Milton, MWTCA donated period tools as a part of the project. The workbench is on display at the Thomas Day House in Milton. Periodically, the bench and tools are demonstrated. Here, Ed, with the help of a visitor, demonstrates the use of a veneer saw. This MWTCA project would not have come together without these individuals. There are many individuals and organizations that have a part in preserving the history and legacy of Thomas Day. Some are listed here and others can be found through internet searches. For a detailed look at Day and his work, the book, Thomas Day, Master Craftsman and Free Man of Color, is available through UNC Press and other sources and is highly recommended. To find out more about MWTCA and the benefits of being a member or to join, visit our website. And please stay tuned to this YouTube channel for more interesting videos on and about antique and traditional tools. Thank you for watching. Until we meet again, happy tooling.